from zero to 24 metres, 2.1 grams per tonne gold or thereabouts. Uh, you know, 24 metres near surface of, of that amount of gold. If you were a gold company, you'd be very excited. Uh, well, a traditional gold company, if you like, or pure gold company, you'd be very excited about getting those gold results so close to the surface. Uh, but interestingly, once you get out of the oxide zone, we get two really nice areas of copper. Well, hello, welcome to Assay TV. Today, I'm joined once again by Tom Pickett, who is the Executive Chairman of Caninda Resources. Caninda Resources are exploring in Australia uh, and they're drilling up their Mount Caninda project up there in uh, Queensland. Uh, Tom, great to see you once again. Um, we spoke uh, reasonably recently. You, you've got this drilling campaign there. You started off with seven holes. Uh, last time we spoke, I think we talked about holes 11 and 12. We're now getting results out from, from hole 13, a very uh, slightly different hole. Start things off maybe with, um, tell us about the location and orientation of hole 13, how it sort of sits compared with the other holes. Sure. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, hole 13 is uh, located, uh, or collared at least, uh, only metres away from our uh, hole 7 and 8 uh, area, which was the, the holes in the southernmost section of the uh, Mount Kinder Breccia zone that we've been exploring recently. Uh, the idea of, of hole 13 was to uh, drill in a, a southwest direction rather than a uh, east to west direction. So it was designed to potentially open up the southern section a little bit further at the Mount Kinder Breccia. And, uh, and, and perhaps look for, uh, for other uh, areas of interest, uh, such as um, uh, porphyry systems, which might be feeding what's going on in the Mount Caninda Breccia zone. Mm, absolutely. I'm sure uh, during this video, we'll, we'll put up some pictures of, 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 so you can see exactly where the holes go. But this, was, this is quite a long hole, 600 and something metres, yeah? Yeah, that's right. Well, we, we didn't actually plan on uh, extending it out that far. We went probably a couple of hundred metres uh, further or about 150 metres further than we had originally planned. Um, and the reason for doing that was that we were starting to see some interesting uh, interesting mineralisation further down the hole and the geologists were, were keen to investigate that further and how that might uh, interrelate with other things that are going on there in terms of uh, pressure and potentially leading into the core of a larger system. Mm. Um, well, let's let's go through what you what you found in the hole. I'm um, starting off, um, at, you know, from surface. You've got this oxide zone. Um, some some reasonable gold hits in there. Yeah, yeah. It's lovely to see gold really close to the surface, um, particularly when you can get in the oxide zone like we did, uh, from zero to twenty four meters, two point one grams per ton gold or thereabouts. Uh, you know, twenty four meters near surface of, of that amount of gold. If you were a gold company, you'd be very excited. Uh, well, a traditional gold company, if you like, or pure gold company, you'd be very excited about getting those gold results so close to the surface. Uh, but interestingly, once you get out of the oxide zone, we get two really nice areas of copper um, in the uh, in the primary zone. So from 36 metres to 140 metres, we got uh, you know, a bit over 100 metres of over 1% copper equivalent. Then again, further down uh, from 229 metres, we got another 108 metres at uh, over 1% copper equivalent. So it's fantastic to see uh, that gold zone above uh, the, the, the copper primary zone. And when you include uh, some, some lower grade areas in between that, there's still uh, still copper grades within that. Uh, so that can be included in, uh, in the overall intercept, which is fantastic to see. Mm. And, and these, these lower zones, these are you know, two zones of over a, uh, about 100 metres of 1% copper. And what are they sort of telling you about the overall sort of uh, size and shape of the project? This is in a, a new southwest direction you've been drilling it. Well. Yeah, look, the, the idea of the hole, as I said, was to extend that, uh, that southern zone. And we, we certainly believe that we've, we've done that. So um, what was sort of first thought to be a few hundred metres in strike, we've extended potentially a, a, another couple of hundred metres by, by this hole. Of course, we would like to now investigate um, what's sitting above some of those zones, which hasn't uh, been adequately explored in, uh, in, the, uh, in the past. Obviously, we, uh, we've set out to, to open that southern section. We believe that these two zones do that for us, which is great to see. Uh, and it's, it's very similar to, to the other holes that we've uh, managed to uh, to put together quite successfully and there's there's hundreds of meters of copper uh, contained within them uh, so what's sitting above that is very very interesting and then linking that to the other parts of the system is really what's next mm. um, I noticed in your uh, press release uh, you talked about the possibility of you know there are some similarities with this brescia zone uh, you've seen with in these sort of upper zones of, of porphyry uh, 
uh, porphyries around around the sort of southwest Pacific area. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, look, um, the the mineralization that we're seeing or the the stockwork veining uh, of, of pyrite and, and alteration is similar to other systems and, and our geologists and, and others that have looked at it um, that are uh, separate to us or independent of us uh, have made similarities to other large porphyry style systems. Um, a comparison has been made previously in some of our releases that uh, it's similar in, in, in nature to the Cadia style deposit. And we want to investigate further about how that uh, might eventuate with our uh, future exploration. So we've engaged uh, the services of a couple of uh, porphyry style experts, uh, and we're, we're going to do some investigating about how we might vector our, um, our, our, our future exploration towards uh, expanding on that porphyry understanding, which will lead, lead to obviously a, a much larger bulk tonnage operation than what we've already created here. Mm, absolutely. Um, and but the you know you're you're on a whole thirteen of this campaign. Um, what what are the next steps uh, for 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 the drilling? Yeah. Look, obviously um, we've extended the existing resource area with with this hole. We believe so. Um, the the future drilling will be uh, identifying the areas that sit above the the fantastic results out of hole thirteen. Uh, including investigating a little bit further about a deeper gold zone that was going on there. There was also some very good gold hits uh, further down that hole. So how they link up to, to other gold hits within um, other holes within uh, our earlier exploration is obviously something that is of interest to us. Uh, we got 15 metres at 2.7 grams per tonne gold from 314 metres. So that was very, very interesting, uh, interesting gold results. So what we'll do is we'll investigate further to the to the north with some drilling out to the to the northeast. We'll obviously in, intend to continue with this uh, southwest exploration uh, and link up the, uh, the well, possibly link up the the porphyry style mineralization and, and uh, investigate this larger bulk tonnage operation. Such that when we first started the exploration at Mount Caninda, we had five and a half million tons, uh, and we intend to use as our driver, which has always been the case. Uh, expanding the size of this uh, with this project. We believe we've done that considerably to date and we're going to continue to do that as we go forward with the future mm. drilling. Probably about five more holes uh, will give us an idea as to where to go next. Um, and so we've already started a brand new hole just today. Mm, absolutely. And in terms of sort of the timelines for sort of news flow and possibly a, a resource update or something, um, how, how, how's that looking? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, we're, we're constantly working in the background on uh, updating the information in terms of the resource. Uh, the resource that was uh, that we inherited, in, in a sense, was a, was under a, a previous jork. It wasn't the 2012 standard. So we're bringing up uh, the current uh, information to that 2012 standard. And obviously, every time we finish a hole, that provides us more, more data and obviously more tonnage, and, and that has to be included in that. So... There will come a time where we will update on that position. Uh, it's not quite yet. We've got a few more things to add to it. Uh, so, so definitely it'll be a larger update. Uh, watch this space. Absolutely. So sort of five more holes or so and then sit and see where you're at. Yeah, look, the five more holes isn't where we'll stop. We've got a lot to investigate here. This thing is actually proving itself to be, uh, as I've said previously, the gift that keeps on giving. So uh, we, we want to expand the size, obviously, uh, with that comes uh, further attention. And, and so the better we can do, the better uh, everyone uh, will, will be out there hopefully buying stock on the market and uh, we'll see some improvement on the, uh, on the share price for all our shareholders. Perfect. Okay, well, thank you very much uh, for that update, Tom. Um, look forward to hearing more as you get to drilling, drilling some more and finding these new zones. Appreciate it. Thank you.